So now that we're done with the modeling toolkit, we're going to talk about some deformers and uh, one or two stray tools that I just haven't covered yet that are useful and helpful. So I have created a couple of starting objects. They're just a simple subdivided cylinder and cube. I'm going to start with this cube. And I know I showed this earlier, but I did want to record it. So you had it for reference. Um, and that's the circularize uh, tool, which is new in Maya 2018. Um, so you select some edges that you want to be a circle. You go to Edit Mesh, and it's in green if you still have that option turned on. There are some options um, available to you. So I'm going to click Apply. Okay, and there it goes. It made it a circle. Now it also twisted it in a weird spirally sort of way. So you can uh, adjust the twist. Straighten that back out. Uh, I'm guessing 45 is probably going to be pretty close to where it should be. Um, or if you want to keep it weird, go for it. You do you. Um, normal orientation. So this you can't really see with that selection. Um, but if I go down to, let's say I select these edges. Oops, not that one. Come on, there we go. Those edges, make sure I don't have anything else selected. And I'm going to hit circularize again. And there we go. Now it's circular, but it's kind of weird. So we can adjust the normal orientation. Uh, as edge, face, automatic. That'll give you a few different looks. Uh, the alignment. So you can go per vertex. So it looks like a, no, it doesn't look like a circle from any angle. I don't know what that's doing. Uh, surface average or automatic. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Radial offset. So that'll kind of shrink and grow, and you can hold down control to um, get finer tune adjustments. Uh, twist to straighten that back out. Uh, let's see, what is Relax Interior doing? Whoops. Go back to automatic. Relax Interior doesn't seem to do much in this case. Uh, we can just kind of play around with this and see. You can add divisions if you want to. So add divisions doesn't look like it's doing anything. It's, I mean, it's, it got more round, but it doesn't appear to do anything until you go to vertex mode. And you can see that they've added a bunch of vertices around the uh, circumference. So that's a circular eyes. Um, I think it works better up here than it does down there, but certainly a useful uh, tool nonetheless. Uh, now, next thing I want to show you on this cube uh, is called the wedge tool. And so the wedge tool is a way to kind of extrude around a corner in a way. Uh, let me show you how this works. So I'm going to select uh, in order for the wedge tool to work, and I'm going to I'll first show you on a super simple cube, you need to have selected a face and an edge, which means you need to be in multi-component select. Okay, so you can select that in the modeling toolkit or right click and choose multi. All right, so select an edge, hold down shift, select a face, and then you want to go up to edit mesh and wedge click on that and there's the wedge so you've got a couple of options you've got wedge angle and then you have divisions okay I think they're both rather self-explanatory um, so like you can get that shape or that shape and keep things nice and smooth uh, and even so uh, that's one way to use wedge there is another way and that is, let's say for instance, actually let me first undo that wedge. Okay. Um, you don't have to choose a connected edge. It needs to be on the same object, but it doesn't need to be connected. So I'm going to select this edge real quick and just extrude it out. Okay, now with that edge selected, I'm going to select this face, go to Edit Mesh, Wedge, and there we go. So it's using that edge as kind of the center pivot for this extrusion. 
And so you got the same options, but now it's extruding around this edge instead of the edge right next to it. Okay, so if you do that and then you set this to 180, you've made a really nice arch. There's other ways to get an arch, but um, you know you've got those options. Uh, it also means in a slightly, slightly more interesting use case. Um, if we go back to this cube, you can select. Uh, we'll go back to multi. I'm going to select these edges and this face, and go to wedge. And there we go. Okay, it's kind of like a periscope. Um, yeah, so that's wedge. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It keeps things all quads, which is nice. It's nice and even. Um, you know, sometimes if you're just trying to do this extrusion by hand, it can be tough to keep things feeling consistent and like it has the same volume. Uh, overall, wedge uh, is a great way to get around that. Um, so that is the wedge tool. I'm going to just undo a whole bunch, see if we can't get, I probably can't get all the way back. Oh, maybe. Oh, most of the way. Okay. Um, the next thing that I want to show is the poke tool, which does something interesting. And I'm going to grab a bunch of faces. So I'll grab all of all of these faces, so just everything around the, the outside. And that's also in the Edit Mesh uh, tool and Poke. So that's what Poke does. Kind of crisscrosses and subdivides um, the faces. Now, if we look at the options here, we have a vertex offset and we have um, offset space. So. If I set the vertex offset, let's try. Let's try it like 0.2 on the Z. I'll say local, and let's see what happens. Poke face. There we go. So that offset now takes that center point, and instead of just adding it, it adds it, and then it moves it to you know whichever direction we say. So now we have a spiky cube. Um, so if you need to make a spiky cube. Um, that's how you do it. Now you can use this in slightly more interesting ways too. So I can take all of, I'm going to do this in front view to make sure that I get all the faces right. You can select all of these faces, go to edit mesh and poke and set the set of 0.2. I'm going to go with 0.05, click apply. There we go. Now I've made a bumpy cylinder. How interesting. Um, I did that just so that we have some something interesting to look at for the next part, which is the deformers. So uh, now we're going to look at the deform menu. And I'm not going to go through all of these because that would take three weeks. Um, I'm just going to point out a few. So lattice is one of the more popular ones. And the way lattice works is it creates this edit cage around your object, which is obviously far simpler than the object itself. Uh, and then you can right click and you've got lattice point. And so these are all the different points on the lattice. And as you move them, so maybe I'll, I'll take uh, these four, and you can move them, you can rotate them, you can scale them. I'll just scale these. It scales the object underneath. Okay, but it keeps it nice and smooth and even. Maybe I'll take these two and I'll just move them out. Okay. And uh, just for some variation, maybe I'll select these again and rotate them. Okay. So that's lattice deformer. Um, see the geometry is all evenly affected and if you decide you don't like it, you can just delete the lattice and the object goes back to normal. Okay. Now, if you decide you do like it and you just you're you're willing to commit to these changes, you can select the 
uh, object and you can delete by type history and that lattice will disappear but the changes will stay. Okay, and that's generally how deformers work. But I'm going to delete the lattice and get back to normal. And let's look at a couple others. Uh, so in the form, let's go to... Um, actually, I'm going to add a plane here real quick. And I'm going to scale it up. And I'm going to move it over. Okay. And I'm also going to uh, add some divisions. That's probably too many. We'll go three. Three. There we go. That's enough. Um, so deform and texture is what I'm going to do next, which is here. And click on that. And then I need to go to the attribute editor. And we've got this texture deformer tab. And then we've got this field here that says texture. You can click on the texture option and then you can load in an image texture or you can just choose, let's choose cloth, how about? And there's a cloth texture. Now this is a, this isn't like a bump map, this is an actual deformer that is changing the geometry. Right? It is pushing vertices around. Um, but you can go in, you can adjust the strength. Uh, I think you can do negatives. Yes, you can do negatives. You know, obviously normally you're, you're going to need to decrease the natural strength of it. Um, you can offset, so move that up or down, which actually moves the whole thing. And then you can also go in, if you click on this texture, you can adjust the, um, you know, all your normal texture options, and you've got your Place 2D Texture tab. So if you want to um, adjust the size of it, you can adjust your repeat UV. So right now it's repeating four times across. If we increase this number, it's going to shrink the relative size of the texture. So we can go to, let's try 20 and 20. Okay. Now, when we go that small, the issue we get is we don't have enough detail in the, in the plane to really accurately represent that. Okay, so you might need to select this plane and subdivide it or add more divisions. Okay. To get a better look at that, uh, we'll cancel that because I don't want to blow this up. Um, so that's a texture deformer. I applied it to a plane, but you can apply it to anything. Uh, a few more, and these are all going to be in the deform. Uh, where'd it go? Nonlinear. Uh, tab. So I just broke that window off. Go to Deform, Nonlinear, you just click on this little double dotted line and you can break that off into its own uh, window. Whoops. Nope. Undo that. Nonlinear. There we go. Okay, so first, yeah, I'm not going to go through all of these, uh, just a couple. Feel f uh, Certainly feel free to experiment uh, on your own time though. So we have Bend, and there's options for that. Um, but I'm just going to click Apply. Actually, let me undo that real quick and then just click it. Okay. So to get to the, uh, the options for this uh, Bend Deformer, you want to go to your Channel Box Layer Editor and then in the Input section, it's the same place where if you like you add a cube and you want to add divisions to a cube, same place. Now we've got four different options. We have Envelope, we have Curvature, uh, Low Bound, and High, high Bound. So... This is doing nothing. There it goes. Curvature. Okay. So there's bend. And you can change um, change the direction this bends by rotating this manipulator. So I'm going to click on that. You see it says bend handle. If I rotate this uh, 90 degrees around the Y, now it's bending backwards. Okay, so that's bend. Uh, another nice thing about um, these deformers is you don't have to apply them to the entire object. You can apply them just to parts. So let's go to flare. Actually, I'm going to first select 
the bend and just delete it. So flare, look at our inputs. We have start flare X and Z, okay, which is like width, width and depth. So I'm gonna select those both, middle click and drag. Oh, it just doesn't want to work for me today, I see. Nothing wants to work for me. Okay, if you type it in, um, you can see what flare does. Okay, this is now it's like a cone. Uh, you could, but you can also give it a curve. Okay, uh, and then you've got low bound and high bound, which is kind of like a starting point. So if you don't want it to start right at the bottom, but you want to start up there, I'm gonna bring these down to something more reasonable. Okay, so if you're doing a vase or a lamp, this is a pretty easy way to get some of these shapes. Okay, you can even go negative on the curve, whatever you want to do. Okay, then you also have uh, twist, works much the same way. Just add twist, go to your options, and we can choose, we can adjust the start or the end angle. Uh, let me turn on wireframe on shaded. So you can see this a little bit better. Uh, whoops. Got my twist handle. Okay, so you can see how that is actually twisting the geometry. And again, you can adjust the low bound and the high bound. So if you don't want it to twist at the bottom here, let me increase the angle so it's more obvious. Uh, oops, come on. Okay, this just doesn't want to work with middle mouse button. So go negative point three. Okay, now it doesn't start the twist until up here. Um, you can also just apply this to individual faces. So I'm gonna go into front view and select all those faces and let's apply another flare. Oops. Set those to maybe three, and now we're just flaring out the bottom of that. Okay, so those are deformers. Again, there's a ton of them here. Um, feel free to experiment. If something sounds like the thing that you want to do, like wrap or um, wrinkle, um, open it up, fire it up, and uh, play around. There's also, you can go to the uh, Autodesk Wiki, just go to the help, and Autodesk Maya help, and there's a information on every single deformer um, that you could possibly use.